Well, I wish I had some wonderful story to tell you about how I became a reporter covering the Supreme Court, but the truth is I just got assigned the beat. Nobody else was doing it. I worked for the National Observer at the time. It was the late 60s and early 70s, and I didn't know anything. And so I just worked very hard to learn everything I could about what the court was doing, what its history was, and I was very young and shameless about asking questions of anybody who'd answer them. I mean, one of my favorite stories is I was reading a brief um, in a case called Reed v. Reed, which was the first sex discrimination case to come before the court, and I really couldn't understand the legal theory behind it because it had said that the 14th Amendment covered women, and I thought, I thought the 14th Amendment was written for black people. And so I <laughs> flipped the front of the brief. It was written by a Rutgers Law professor named Ruth Bader Ginsburg. And I called her up and I got an hour long lecture. <laughs>
and I don't, I think 2012 was the first year I didn't go out on the campaign trail. I just am not confident enough of my um, technical skills in the modern era, and I was tired of carrying so much equipment. It was too heavy for an old broad like me. So I decided to stay home in 2012, but I did miss it. I really did miss it. Um, I, in, on election night this, this year, I'll be covering the Senate races for our newscast unit. I don't mind taking a lowly place as long as I'm covering a breaking story. It's a great thing to cover a breaking story. I love covering a breaking story. And if it's not my beat, I'll find a way in. It's a very different place from when I first started to cover it. I mean, the court that I started to cover had a liberal majority. This one has a conservative majority. Um, it has moved, this court is so far to the right compared to previous courts that I've covered that, for example, John Harlan, who was considered on the definite conservative wing of the court when I started covering the court, would today, I think, reasonably be called a centrist or maybe a quasi-liberal. Um, and that's not because he, ch you know, he would have changed. It's because the court has changed, and um, Republican presidents have named far more hard right nominees. Uh, so that, for example, Reagan appointee Sandra Day O'Connor has been replaced by Samuel Alito, and you can look at a half dozen major opinions in the last few years and know that if she had been there instead of Alito, the cases would have gone the other way. There's a famous story about Justice O'Connor uh, that I was told during an internal debate at the court about an affirmative action case. And Justice Scalia is said to have been going on at some length about the importance of a meritocracy um, and that affirm affirmative action is an affront to an American, uh, a meritocracy. And O'Connor is said to have leaned forward in her seat and said, well, I was an affirmative act. And she was pretty clear about saying that, that she wasn't the best qualified person in the country when she was picked. She was picked as a qualified person who was also a woman. Ronald Reagan had made a pledge to name a woman to the court. And although some on his staff urged him to renege on that pledge and said that there were ways to do that, he just wasn't interested in that. So he wanted to name a woman. And it wasn't that easy then, because there were very few women on the courts, and even fewer who were Republicans and conservative Republicans. So I always say the same thing about my career. I, for 21 years, I did a weekly television show where I was the girl. There were four guys. We talked about all the major issues of the day. It wasn't about law. It was about current events. It was called Inside Washington. It was um, often the best rated public affairs show in Washington. And I have no illusions that I was, got that job because I was the best person, the smartest person in Washington. They needed a woman on the show. And in that era, there weren't that many women to pick from who actually had, been, had covered a lot of things. And I was it. And I was good at it. There's no question I was really good at it. And I had a good sense of humor. I tried not to let things get out of hand. And I, would, um, I often sparred with my colleague, Charles Krauthammer. And my way of doing it, because we disagreed on a lot of issues, was to, when he was starting to get to me, I would start to giggle. And <laughs> it was the best way to deal with it. When I first started doing it, my husband um, said to me, we were, he would watch every week, and he said to me, you're too strident. And women always have to worry about that. So I developed the tactic, unless I totally was losing my temper, of giggling. It worked really well for me. So I, I you know, there is no such thing as the best person in any venue. You want to go find a doctor to do a knee replacement? You can find a really good person. But there is no best person. And the same is true in all of the jobs that we do.